Hello lovely people, guess who's been buying books again? It's me, this is a haul. Sophie Vlogs! So I have a handful of uh, physical books that I want to talk about and then at the end I'm going to talk about some Kindle books that I bought. I'm not going to do too much of a waffle because we all know what we're here for. I'm going to kick things off with one of my pre-orders which I was very thrilled to arrive because I'd already forgotten that I did it. This is uh, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. Um, number one, just this cover is absolutely gorgeous and amazing. This is a YA thriller that's following 18-year-old Dornis. Her mixed heritage has meant that she has never quite fit in in her hometown or the nearby Ojibwe reservation. Um, she witnesses a murder and then she gets drawn in and she goes undercover, I think she's helping out the FBI, in investigating this string of deaths. The deaths appear to be drug related, um, I think that there's potentially something going on under the surface and then it becomes this, this story of how far will she go to protect um, the only home she's ever known. So um, I just think it sounds really intriguing. It's been a while since I've read a proper thriller, I think. It's not a genre that I read the hugest amount of, but when they're done well, I do really enjoy them. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be like very tense and keep me on the edge of my seat and that sort of thing. After that is An Orchestra of Minorities by Chikosi Obioma. I have been meaning to buy this book for ages, and so then I finally just did. I really loved The Fisherman by Chikosi Obioma. I read it a number of years ago now, but it's one of those books that's really stayed with me. This is sort of a retelling slash inspired by the Odyssey, which is already like a buzzword for me. And then also um, he's using like Igbo methods of storytelling and that sort of thing. So what I really loved about The Fisherman was it was really all about fate. And um, The Fisherman is sort of like these brothers and then it's prophesied that one of them is going to kill the other. And then it very much becomes like this story of like free will versus fate all in like this backdrop of like the politics of what was going on in Nigeria at the time and it was just so interesting and I really need to do a reread. This sounds again like it is doing a similar thing in regards to like strands of fate if you will. This follows Chinonso who sees a woman who is preparing to jump from a highway bridge. He's a poultry farmer and so he, he gets up there with her and he throws two of his chickens off to sort of try and stop her and she's really touched by this and then the two of them sort of fall in love. Her parents object to the match because he's uneducated so he um, raises funds to go and study in Cyprus to get a degree um, and I gather that while this is going on he he becomes infuriated by the fact that like the goalposts keep moving if you will so he keeps getting further and further away from the future with the one he loves so I can really see like the Odyssey threads in this setup I'm so intrigued to see how it's gonna go to go the Obioma is one of those you know when you're like I don't want to say someone is like one of my autobi favourite authors until I've read a couple of their books and so far he only had the one book so I'm really intrigued to see what this is like and to see how all of those things come together. And then it's the middle grade, this is North Child by Edith Patu. I don't know if you can see the gorgeous, there's like a compass, um, I don't know what this is called when it's clear but it's shiny. I don't know what that's called, but there's a compass on it and I think it's really cool. Rose is a north child. She's born facing the north. There's a superstition that says that children born facing the north will travel very far from home. Her mother is very terrified that she's going to go on a journey, she's going to die, but Rose doesn't know this, so when this big bear comes and offers to take her on a journey, she says yes. And so she ends up going on this magical adventure, she's going to end up having to like save her family. Um, this is one that has been on my want to read list for so long. I'm doing like a mini project where essentially my good reads to read list which I use to file away books that I'm interested in has got a little bit unwieldy so I've gone through and I've really um, taken off a lot of stuff and I've like whittled it down and I'm also trying to try and prioritize reading stuff that has been on there for a very long time. A lot of that I'm trying to do through the library but this is one that has been on there like since like I joined Goodreads and um, so I decided to finally get it and to see what it's like and I'm hoping it's going to be like a magical middle grade fairy tale inspired adventure. After that is The Word for World is Forest by Ursula K. Le Guin. I'm a big Ursula K. Le Guin fan. I know that she is not for everyone. I think you either really like her or you're just sort of like, I don't get it. Um, I've been really enjoying working my way through her sci-fi series. This one sounds super duper interesting. It follows a race of aliens who are very peaceful, but they're sort of conquered by this other race of aliens and forced into servitude. They have these strictures against violence, which they find themselves breaking in order to rebel against these people. But in doing so, do they lose part of themselves? It sounds like this eruption into violence will only beget more violence. And I think this is gonna be a very interesting look at that sort of thing. Um, one thing I really like about Ursula K. Le Guin is that I feel like she kind of grapples with these really like sort of large political topics. 
you know, like, is is violence an answer in this situation? Does going against your strictures, like, what does that do to you as people? Do you lose yourselves? Um, I don't know. I just think it sounds very intriguing. It's also very, very small, so I'm interested to see how she's going to handle it. But um, very intrigued, and I'm hoping it's going to be another delightful Ursula K. Le Guin one that's going to make me think a lot. Moving on to some non-fiction, I also picked up Inglorious Empire, What the British Did to India by Shashi Saror. Essentially, this is just like a pocket of history which, and stop me if you've heard me say this before, because I say it a lot about non-fiction books that I pick up that are to do with history. I feel like I have a vague understanding with pockets of knowledge, but I don't really understand it, like, fully. This is really looking at the uh, history of Britain conquering India. This is sort of like demolishing that idea of like the British as like benign imperialists and that sort of thing. And it's really actually examining what was this experience like. And I just think that it's a pocket of history that I should really have a better understanding of. So um, I'm hoping that this book is going to really like lay it out for me and then I'm going to be able to like go forward and have a much more in-depth understanding of this moment. My final physical book I want to show you is Once Upon a Time in the East by Zhao Lugo. This is uh, Zhao Lugo's memoir about growing up in China. I'm just going to read you the back. So, born in 1973, her parents handed her over to a childless peasant couple in the mountains. Age two and suffering from malnutrition on a diet of yam leaves, they left Zhao Lu with her illiterate grandparents in a fishing village on the East China Sea. So this follows her from that sort of start point of her life, just essentially through her life. She ends up moving to Britain at one point. As we know, I really enjoy reading memoirs that sort of um, ground me in someone's life while also introducing me to sort of like moments of time that I don't really know anything about. So um, this is billed as this generation's Wild Swans and I really enjoyed reading Wild Swans last year. It was one of my favourite non-fiction books of the year. And this has been on my radar ever since I saw it mentioned in a video by The Bookish Land. Um, so I just thought, hey, let's read it. <laughs> Moving on to books I bought on my Kindle, um, first of those is The Rat and the Dawn by Renee Adier. I have actually already read this one, it's going to be coming up in a book chat near you at some point in the future. This is a fantasy retelling of Shahrazad. As you might expect from such, it is set in a world where um, the ruler um, marries women and then every night he kills them. Um, our main character is um, hoping to avenge her best friend who is one of these women and um, so she marries him and then what develops is sort of like um, a love story that is complicated and there's also sort of a greater political outlook happening of like what is politically happening as well. It was fun and I enjoyed it. You can hear my thoughts in more depth in a book chat at some point. After that is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is one that I've heard really interesting things about. So I know that it's the first book in a series. I know it is set in a world where um, there are like magical powers to do with Jade and also that it is very much like sort of a crime syndicate. So there are like blood feuds, there's a lot of like political machinations going on. All of these are things which sound very, very interesting to me, so I'm very intrigued to give it a go. Next up is Secrets of the Starcrossed by Clara O'Connor. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have not heard good reviews of this book, but I bought it anyway because it was 99p and I wanted to make up my own mind. I knew that this is Arthurian inspired. It's also set in a world where the Roman Empire never fell. And I know that there's something to do with people having like dormant Celtic powers. I have a feeling that what I want from this is like a fantasy book that is exploring like Celtic Roman history with magic that's also tying into like the King Arthur mythos. I have a feeling that it's potentially going to be a little bit more of like a love triangle situation from what I've read on the back. Um, essentially just a lot of the reviews I've seen of this have just said that it is um, just not good. <laughs> And that it's, it's both trying to do too much but also not giving you enough and um, the pacing's off and all that sort of thing. So the main people I've seen review it is Olivia Savannah at Olivia's Catastrophe and Ashley at Frolic Through Fiction. Neither of them had a very good time reading it. But I'm just going to give it a go anyway. <laughs> I've made a decision. Uh, after that is Shades of Milk and Honey by Mary Robinette Kowal. This was billed to me as Pride and Prejudice meets Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, and I love both of those books. So it's set in this world that is very, like, Regency, that, like, manipulation of glamour is, is something that um, women are prized for being able to do. And so the main character Jane and her sister Melody are sort of, like, vying for the affections of gentlemen, but then someone takes an interest in her sister, and Jane believes that it is uh, not honourable intention and he's just after the dowry so she's gonna like push her magical powers to the limit in order to protect her sister 
I just thought it sounded intriguing. It's another one that has been on my TBR for a very long time, so I just decided to finally go for it and just see what it's like. After that is Natives by Akala. I really like Akala. I think he's really great. I've watched some of the programs that he's done, and um, I've always really enjoyed them. And I know that this is sort of um, a combination of like him talking about his own personal experiences in Britain, and then also like a wider look at like Britain in general and the way that like race and stuff is treated here. A lot of my like anti-racist, anti-colonialist readings have been very focused on stuff like American experience and that sort of thing, and I've been really trying to make sure that I also include readings from where I am actually from. Um, so I'm really looking forward to diving into this one. After that is The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rothy. I think this is on my radar because of Sajid. I'll link his channel down below anyway. I think it's because of him. If not, it's from someone else and I can't remember who. All I know really about this is it's set in the 1970s in a Caribbean village and there's a fisherman who is like singing and then this mermaid like hears his song and um, is intrigued. Um, but this mermaid has been swimming the Caribbean seas for generations because she was cursed by jealous wives. So um, it's very short. I think it's a love story, but I also wonder if it's it's um, unpicking a curse and that sort of thing. I don't know, I'm very interested. She's an author that I'm very interested in, so I'm hoping that it's going to be really, really great. The next one is The Confectioner's Guild by Claire Luana. Um, this is like a murder mystery with magic and baking, which are like really ticking some boxes for me. So it's like the main character enters this baking competition and she doesn't realise that she has like magical powers that can manifest through her bakes until she accidentally kills someone with her cupcake. And then it's like, a murder investigation, is there something else going on? And I was just like, I was like, magical baking murder mystery. I'm in. I'm there. Um, the penultimate book is Kingdom of Souls by Redder Baron. This is one that I've really heard like doing the rounds on booktube and I've heard like really good things about. Ara is like, um, heir to sort of like two different magical lineages but she doesn't have any power of her own so she does this bargain whereby she trades away years of her life in order for magic powers because um, children are going missing in the kingdom and she wants to save them and I just think that that as a concept is really interesting I'm really intrigued to see how it will build I think this is the first book in a series so um, hopefully it's going to be like a new one to explore the final book is Exhalation by Ted Chiang um, this is a collection of short stories. I did a whole podcast episode on Ted Chiang with my friend Mark. Um, I'll link that in the description down below in case you're interested in it, where we talked about stories of your lives and others, which was his uh, first short story collection. It is science fiction that really leans on the science aspect, and it was just so interesting. It was one of those where, um, as is the way with a lot of story, short story collections, not every single one of them landed for me, but the ones that did landed so well, and I still think about them to this day. And um, I just think he's such an interesting writer. I think he has such interesting ideas and then the way that he like translates them into his work. So I pick up his other collection because it is his second collection and it's always interesting to see how a writer progresses. Um, I don't know, I'm really excited for this one. I'm really interested to sort of um, dip my toe back into his world because he has such an interesting way of like approaching sci-fi. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's everything I wanted to talk about this week. The usual shebang. Have you read them? Did you like them? Do you have thoughts on them? All of that and more, please do leave a comment down below. I always love to hear from you. Um, otherwise, I will draw this to a close. I hope you're having a really lovely day, and I'll see you next time for something different.